To learn more about earning college credits with study hall courses, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. Let's say this guy Gus always went on the same summer vacation when he was a kid. Every year, Gus knew that for the first week of July, he will be sleeping in a cabin next to a lake eating hot dogs and paddling across the lake in a canoe. And he absolutely hated it. Lake water, cabins, mosquitoes, hot dogs. Well, the hot dogs were the one saving grace, but everything else, no thanks. So Gus decided vacations were just not really his thing. But then Gus met Gabby. Gabby loves vacation, and she thinks Gus is being a bit judgmental and jumping to conclusions. Gus wants Gabby to like him, so he swears he'll work on it. He just doesn't really know where to start. Luckily for Gus, there are plenty of solutions to his problem. Which isn't to say that those solutions will be quick or easy. You can't just start loving lakes or stop being judgy overnight. In fact, there's not really a clear, simple path to anything when it comes to being a happier, healthier person or improving a relationship. So that's why it can be helpful to know about all of the available options that can help us out with these things. Hi, I'm Deja Fitzgerald, and this is Study Hall, Intro to Psychology. We're not just talking about Gus here. We are going to help Gus expand his horizons and find his ideal vacation, helping him become less judgy and woo Gabby in the process. But along the way, we're really going to be talking about the options and solutions available to address all kinds of mental health concerns. Because vacations and mental health aren't exactly the same thing, but it's a nice metaphor. And when it comes to mental health, finding or providing help can often seem as complicated, confusing, and out of reach as an affordable Airbnb with good reviews that doesn't make you clean the whole place before you go. So let's break it down. First, there are two main kinds of therapy. Psychotherapy is a name for any treatment that involves talking and thinking, and drug therapy involves taking medication to treat symptoms. Some people might prefer one over the other, or they might benefit from a combination of both. And to narrow things down for Gus, we'll give him two options too. He can take a road trip or go on a cruise. First, the road trip. It's the classic vacation. But there are lots of ways to do a road trip. Gus could stock up on coffee and energy drinks and drive for 16 hours straight. He could break the trip into shorter legs and find interesting places to stay each night along the way. He could stick to the major interstates or pay a visit to the residents of Radiator Springs. There are pros and cons to each option, and Gus may have to try some different things before he knows which one he likes the best. But regardless, at the end of the trip, Gus will be in a new place. He'll have learned some things and gained perspective. The same goes for psychotherapy. Various forms of what could be considered psychotherapy have been around for millennia. People have been seeking counsel and enhanced well-being since... Well, ever since people have had problems, which is forever. But the first widely academically documented psychotherapy is known as psychoanalysis. It was created by Sigmund Freud in the 1890s. And while many of his ideas are no longer practiced widely, neo-Freudian psychologists like Carl Jung and Karen Horney continued to innovate upon his methods in the 1930s and 40s. And they developed a wider range of approaches called psychodynamic therapy. This kind of therapy is often a long-term experience, possibly lasting for years. Over many sessions with a psychodynamic therapist, a person might explore their childhood or examine their dreams to gain insight about their life. Like if a current relationship mirrors a childhood relationship where they felt powerless. A psychodynamic therapist can help their clients recognize and avoid harmful patterns. Other talk therapy approaches aren't designed to last years. Instead, a variety of interpersonal therapies are designed to address specific problems over a period of a few sessions to a few months. One of these kinds of therapy is called humanistic therapy. It was inspired in the 1950s by the work of Carl Rogers, a psychologist who believed that individuals have tools to work towards their own mental health. Within humanistic therapy, person-centered therapy is one approach where the counselor sees themselves as a witness, guide, and sounding board. They create an environment where their client can share freely about their life without feeling like the counselor is judging them. Because just like Gabby, no one wants to feel like they're being judged. This technique is often referred to as unconditional positive regard. Another form of humanistic therapy is called gestalt therapy, where the goal is to work towards a more integrated, authentic, and self-accepting self. In this case, the client is still very engaged, 
but the counselor probably asks more questions and uses different techniques to address an issue. Then there are a few different kinds of behavioral therapy, which can be further divided into a first wave, second wave, or third wave approach, depending on when they were developed. First wave behavioral therapy focuses on learning new responses to certain situations. For example, a process called systematic desensitization can help people address specific challenges or fears through exposure. They'll follow a series of steps to understand what part of an experience is causing them distress and learn strategies to help them respond by directly addressing the stressful situation. So say Gus actually had a phobia of lakes. He'd address this by first looking at pictures of lakes, then videos, then driving near a lake, and so on until he can eventually paddle a canoe across the lake without experiencing significant distress. Then cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, represents the second wave of behavior therapies. It focuses on identifying and changing unhealthy thought patterns. So a CBT therapist might recommend that a client writes out what they are thinking during a moment of anxiety to help them identify thought distortion or a way that the thought is inaccurate or not reflecting reality like if they catastrophize or always expect a dramatically bad outcome, then they can change or respond to their own thoughts in a healthier way. An example of third wave behavioral therapy is known as acceptance and commitment therapy. This approach focuses on mindfulness or taking time to observe one's own thoughts without the emotional charge. This helps a person to accept temporary challenges and understand what things they have control over and what they can't change. Along with the different types of therapy, there are also different therapy settings. So this is kind of like Gus thinking about who he wants to travel with. He could go solo, or he could take some friends or family with him. He could even do one of those guided bus tours with a group of strangers. And hopefully, eventually, he can go with Gabby. In the same way, a client can work with a therapist or a counselor one-on-one -on -one if they want a more personal experience. Or they might try small group therapy to help them relate to others and provide additional insight and accountability. Other options include couples therapy, if a person wants to improve their relationship with their romantic partner, or family therapy to work through something that affects their whole household or family unit. There are also self-help groups which focus on peer support, but aren't led by a therapist. Alcoholics Anonymous is one of the most well-known supportive self-help groups. Each of these approaches can be effective in different ways and for different people at different times. But across all the different approaches, it can be extremely important to have a group or therapist that is culturally attuned or understands diverse backgrounds and experiences. For instance, a Latino person may go to a therapist in the United States and say that they think they are experiencing susto. However, when they describe their symptoms, the therapist may recognize them as symptoms of a panic attack. If the therapist isn't familiar with susto, the patient may feel misunderstood and think the therapist can't help them. But if the therapist is familiar with susto, they can explain how susto may include panic attacks, but is something much broader, and work with the patient to understand what is happening and why. The setting and perspective of the therapist or therapy group can make a big difference in a person's experience, whether they feel heard and understood, and whether they're able to make progress in that setting. But maybe Gus isn't sold on road trips and he decides to learn more about cruises. Just like with the road trip, there are different types of cruise. Gus might try a cruise on the Mississippi, or a Caribbean cruise, or Scandinavian cruise. Each one offers something a little different, so Gus will have to find the one that feels right for him. And for some people or situations, psychotherapy may not be the best approach. Or maybe psychotherapy is helpful for a time and then stops feeling helpful. In these cases, medication may be an effective way to treat mental health symptoms. Medications can work on the body and brain in various ways. For instance, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, are a common treatment for depression. Research into how these drugs like Paxil, Prozac, and Zoloft work is still ongoing. One long-standing hypothesis is that low energy and negative feelings are connected to levels of neurotransmitters like serotonin. So by keeping more serotonin available to the nervous system, these medications can improve symptoms of depression. But other researchers have questioned this hypothesis, so more research or better solutions may be necessary. Another class of drugs, known as antipsychotics, works by blocking neurotransmitters like dopamine to treat the symptoms of schizophrenia and other severe psychological disorders. These drugs can reduce auditory and visual hallucinations, 
delusions, and paranoia. Other classes of mental health-related drugs include anti-anxiety medications like Xanax or Valium, which depress central nervous system activity. Mood stabilizers reduce both the mania and depressive symptoms associated with bipolar disorders. And stimulants such as Adderall help those with ADHD focus and maintain attention. A combination of talk therapy and medication can be the most effective treatment for several conditions, though it does depend on the condition, which might be like if Gus decided to go for the best of both worlds. He could drive to the port and then get on a cruise, or he could travel to an island that's only accessible by ferry, so he drives his car into the boat, which then carries him across the water. In any case, part of a mental health professional's work is to help their clients evaluate how effective a particular treatment, medication, or dosage is to determine whether they are experiencing substantial relief. For Gus, the Caribbean cruise felt like the right kind of vacation for him right now. Good for Gus. But next time he needs a vacation, he might need something different. And now he knows that he's got options. So Gus got some things figured out. He's even feeling pretty good about his chances with Gabby. But unfortunately, it's not always quite that easy. There's no quick, easy fix for broadening horizons, getting the girl to like us, or for any of our mental health concerns. And there are still lots of open questions. But there are many paths and approaches available and opportunities for psychologists to continue researching and developing these treatments. That way, everyone can find the solutions that work for them. If you're enjoying Study Hall, Intro to Psychology, and are interested in taking an online course and earning college credit, go to gostudyhall.com or click on this button to learn more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.